Hey all, what's up everybody? Tim with today's SCE. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope wherever you're at, you are doing absolutely awesome this morning. So this video woke me up out of my sleep at about 1.30 a.m. today, and uh, I just had to get out and shoot it. So I'm out way before sunrise. It is freezing cold, uh, but I can't wait to get into what we're gonna talk about today. So the title of today's clip is How to Make Your Mental Game Epic. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, a lot of life comes down to our ability to not only control, but to deliberately focus our mental game. And when I say our mental game, I'm talking about the images and the thoughts and the ideas that we carry around with us on a consistent basis and that we practice both on a conscious and subconscious level. I think it was Tony Robbins said that most success is 80% psychological and only 10% uh, to 20% actually execution. So once we get our mind down and our thinking straight uh, and we get some direction and some intentional focus behind that, it's one of the most powerful tools we have and it can take us to places that are just absolute epic. Uh, and really, when you look back at it, you go, oh my gosh, I can't believe where I'm at. But actually you can um, because what I'm gonna talk to you today about works extremely well. And once you learn to practice it and develop it like any muscle, it's gonna become one of the driving forces in your life and you can use it to change just about anything that's going on. So, in the 60s, there was a guy who wrote a book called Psycho-Cybernetics and the gentleman's name was Dr. Maxwell Maltz. And Dr. Maltz was a plastic surgeon on the West Coast and he did super high-end plastic surgery on uh, Hollywood socialites and women from the Los Angeles and Southern California areas. Now, he wasn't doing plastic surgery like we think about today with all the Botox. He was doing actual cosmetic alterations and he would take these women and he would create virtually perfect cosmetic features on these ladies, whether it was their nose or their mouth or whatever the case may be. And as part of his practice, he would then do a post op consult, right? 90 days, 180, etc. And he'd bring these ladies back in and he'd ask them, how do you feel about the way you look? How do you feel about what you did? And nine out of 10 of them said, you know what, even though you did a nose job, it's not quite right, I need another one. Or I need you know, another nip or another tuck. They weren't happy. And Maltz was confused because he literally was one of the best in the world and he didn't think that there was any way he could make their appearance any better based on what he had the ability to do. And he thought about it and he thought about it and he thought about it and he came to the conclusion that no matter what kind of change he made for them on the outside, that if they didn't change their image of themselves on the inside, no change on the outside is gonna matter. And that is so true, no matter what occurs on the outside, if we don't change the way we see ourselves on the inside, no outside force, no outside anything is gonna make us better. Even if we get cosmetic surgery, it doesn't matter. So Maltz started to do internal work with people in addition to the external work with people, and he saw significant results. You and I, every day we've got a dialogue going on inside our heads. Our thoughts and the pictures that we carry on day in and day out on both the conscious level and the subconscious level drive our lives. We are the product of the thoughts and the images that we carry around. And we do it all the time. We are practicing that all the time. Psychologists tell us that the average human thinks between 60 and 90,000 thoughts every single day. That means we're thinking about one thought every particular second. And 90% of our thoughts are usually less than empowering. So we've got this negative dialogue going on inside our minds all the time. Is it any wonder that we struggle getting to where we want to go and becoming who we want to become? And what I want to challenge you to do is we need to, number one, start to take account of what we're thinking, but more importantly, start to take account of the pictures that we hold of ourselves. Because our mental images and the pictures that we hold drive us even more than our thoughts do. And holding positive pictures and positive images is critical in attaining, in attaining anything we want to attain and in going anywhere we want to go. It's creating that vision grabbing onto it and holding it. Now, I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, how in the world can I do that? I'm not very good at that. And I would say, yeah, you are. Because if you worry, you practice imaging, but you practice negative imaging, you practice fear-based imaging, as opposed to focusing on the good things that can happen, you're focused on the wrong things that can happen and the difficulties that can happen. And we do that all the time. So if you are a worrier, or if you've ever struggled with worry or anxiety on a long-term or short-term basis, you're already really good at that. All you have to do is flip that in a positive direction. Worrying is fear-based, and fear is faith in a negative outcome. Positive expectation and faith is belief in a positive outcome. 
So what I want you to start to think about is what images are you letting move across the theater of your mind? And is that what you want to come to pass? If those images burst out of your mind onto the screen of reality and just hit you, bam, out of nowhere and burst into existence instantaneously, is that what you want? And if not, change it into what you do want. Take that negative, take that negative dialogue, those negative thoughts, take those negative images and create positive ones and begin to implement them. Now, this is gonna take practice, like I said, because this is a muscle that takes time to develop. And if you practice worry, if you practice holding on to those negative images, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, you become really good at it, but you need to change that. So I would encourage you to take a couple minutes every day, create the positive images that you want to see come to fruition in your life, and just start to practice those. Take 30 seconds and just hold that image and bask in it, and just let it flow all over you and, and just envelop you, because that's going to develop excitement and expectation and faith. And the more you do it, the more it's going to build. And if you look at any of the greats, Schwarzenegger, um, you know, Michael Jordan, anybody who's been super successful, positive imaging has been critical to that. The image occurs on the front end, the results occur on the back end. And a lot of times it's just making the simple adjustment of taking account of what am I thinking, what am I imaging, and flipping that into its opposite. Say, if I could come up with the best possible scenario, what would that look like? And then start to practice it. And the more specific and the greater it is, the more likely your success is going to be. And the cool thing is, even if you make it something that's so outlandish, you, you have a tough time getting a hold of it, as you practice it, it's going to become more and more real and you're going to believe it becomes more and more possible. The other cool thing is, even if you miss it, if you're aiming for a level 10 and you miss it, you're more likely to hit a level 8 than if you're hitting for a level 2 and you only get a level one. Hope that makes sense, right? If you're shooting for the stars and you miss, at least you land on the moon. But if you don't shoot for anything, you're gonna go nowhere. So I would encourage you, take those mental images, take those thoughts, if they're not what you want, flip them into their opposite and to begin to deliberately practice them. Practice them in your car on the way to work, uh, in the morning before you go to bed as you're falling off to sleep. Do it for 30 days and I guarantee you, it will make a difference and you will be miles ahead in just a short period of time than where you're at now because it is one of the most powerful and critical factors in getting you to where you want to go. So, Tim from the LV, hoping you have an awesome day. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you soon.